Please be seated. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. Today, I want to talk to you about belief. Sometimes, when we've had something for a long time, we forget that it's something we choose. I think my belief in Jesus might be like that. It seems so much a part of my DNA that I don't think about my belief. I just believe. I don't recognize that I'm actually making a choice. What I do recognize is that sometimes I miss Jesus. So what does that say about my belief? So how is it that Jewish leaders who knew Jesus, who talked with him, who met him in the temple, who knew he performed miracles, how is it that they didn't believe in him, that they didn't believe he was the Son of God? In the chapter before today's reading, Jesus had healed a man that was blind from birth, and several chapters before that, he had healed an invalid at a pool. Miracles happened. How is it that the leaders Jesus was walking with in the temple missed him? How did this happen? And how does this happen? It happens because we're selective about what we choose to believe. When faced with Jesus, we each decide to believe or not. I make a choice, you make a choice, they made a choice. Belief is not forced upon us, it's a choice we make. For example, we have chosen to be here in this sacred space, here at Seminary of the Southwest, and we've chosen based on our beliefs. No one is forcing us to be here. We're here of our own free will, our choice. Because Yahweh loves us, we get to choose to believe or not. The Jewish leadership in the first century also had this choice, right? They chose not to believe in Jesus, not to believe he was the son of God. They chose unbelief in Jesus. And what I think about what I've just said and how I've said it, I'm a little bit ashamed and embarrassed. Why? Because I have just spent two semesters learning about and talking about and experiencing looking at people as individuals, not as a group. And what did I just do? I just lumped these people, these Jewish leaders, into a single homogenous group without batting an eye, and I summed them up, calling them non-believers. Now, to be just a little bit fair to myself, I think that's how the passage portrays them, but I know better. This story is about real people, and I need to think about them this way. I know that each person in that group of leaders had to make a choice. Individually, they each came to a conclusion based on the available facts, their experience, their beliefs, and maybe just a little bit of peer pressure. But they decided to become part of the group that missed Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to see the similarities between me and them, these people that miss Jesus. Because if I look too closely, I might see things that make me uncomfortable. I might see things in myself that reflect upon my belief. So I imagine these people, some of them scholars, discussing Jesus with each other. They probably knew that Jesus was known to have healed people. They heard his teaching. Did they wrestle with what they encountered, just as we do when we work on a scenario together in class, when we read a theological book, when we write or hear a sermon, or have a conversation with a professor or a colleague? I imagine a Jewish leader, a rabbi, thinking about scripture, praying to Jehovah Jireh, and earnestly trying to discern what the words that he has heard or read mean, just like we do today. 
I imagine this rabbi teaching others just as our professors teach us. Teaching others about his belief, spreading his good news. And I see how much like a first century rabbi I just might be. What am I spending my days doing? I'm studying, I'm reading, I'm learning, I'm talking about God, about Jesus, and about what I, what we think about what the Bible is saying to us. We discuss liturgy and the history of our church. We discuss how we believe we should be acting as Christians, as seminarians, as children of God. And we spend a lot of time shaping our own theology, our own belief. And if you're a student like I am, you believe in what we are being taught, more or less, right? So, <laughs> all right. If you're a professor, you believe in what you're teaching your students, right? And if you're part of the staff, you believe you are modeling Christian behavior and supporting the education of students, right? So these Jewish leaders believed what they were doing and teaching and saying was what God wanted them to do. When I think about these Jewish people in this way, I can see that we definitely are not different. We are very much the same. Yet they miss Jesus. However, I have an advantage, and so do you. We have Christ crucified and Christ risen. Yet even with this knowledge and belief, I know I miss Jesus all the time. I don't mean to. I believe in Jesus. So how do I miss Jesus? I miss Jesus when I secretly or publicly judge others. I miss Jesus when I don't pick up a kitchen shift for a classmate that needs off that day and I have the free time. I miss Jesus when I get irritated when people don't do things the way I would do them. I miss Jesus when I'm impatient in the grocery store and the person in front of me has 30 items in the 15 item lane. <laughs> Yeah. All right. And I miss Jesus when I'm busy thinking about what I'm going to say next, and I don't take time to listen to who I'm talking with. I miss Jesus when I rush from one place to another, and I don't take the time to observe and appreciate creation. And I miss Jesus when I am driving. Woo! So how many times a day do I miss Jesus? Do you miss Jesus too? I miss Jesus even though I'm trying really hard not to miss Jesus. And that's exactly how I am like those Jewish leaders. I miss Jesus even though I'm dedicating my life to serving Jesus. And if I miss Jesus, what does that say about my belief? If we read just a little further in today's passage, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And on the surface, some may say that Jesus already knows his sheep and that's why they follow Jesus. But what Jesus said was that his sheep hear his voice. And sheep are smart sometimes and sometimes not so much, but Sheep are smart at recognizing faces. Research at the University of Cambridge shows that sheep can recognize people from photographs. Now it takes the sheep a little bit of time to learn to do this, to learn to recognize their shepherd. I mean, they have to see and then in real life hear the shepherd and once they know the shepherd, then they will follow the shepherd. So like sheep, we have to recognize our shepherd. To recognize Jesus, we have to spend time with Jesus, praying, reading, discussing, sharing. This is how we will recognize Jesus, and this is how we already do recognize Jesus. By doing these things, we are choosing to believe in Jesus, whether we consciously acknowledge we are choosing or not. 
Our belief helps us recognize our shepherd. Our belief is a choice. Now, Jesus tells the men that don't believe, you are not my sheep. Hmm. I find that interesting. If they aren't his sheep, maybe they can't believe. And I have to wonder, what if the Jewish leaders were doing exactly what they were supposed to be doing, and it was their belief that led them there? Is their unbelief in Jesus really their belief in Yahweh? So where is the good news in this message that belief is a choice? Well, the first good news is we get to make a choice every day, even multiple times a day, to believe. We get unlimited chances to choose belief. The better good news is in the passage. When I choose Jesus, no one can take away my choice, my belief. In fact, God will not allow anyone to take away my belief. It reminds me of the verse in Romans where Paul says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing outside of ourselves can separate us from Yahweh but we can choose unbelief. Our shepherd will not allow any force except our choice to snatch us away from our belief. So make no mistake, our choice to believe does not rely on our ability not to miss Jesus. No matter, no matter how many times I miss Jesus by the things I do or leave undone, no matter if you miss Jesus, my belief, your belief, keeps you in the sheepfold. Amen.